Our topic today is a very important topic which we need to learn and understand. Our topic is, what is God's glory? Because the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation chapter 14, says, give glory to God. What is God's glory? How to give glory to God? And so we need to understand first the imperatives. The imperatives of accepting the gospel is that in Revelation 14, let me read, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God! And give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the spring of water. So there are four important elements of the first angel's message who preached the everlasting gospel. First, fear God. Second is to give glory to God. Third, the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and earth, the sea, and the spring of waters. We will look at those other three in the next presentation. But for the meantime, our topic today really is to understand this idea to give glory to him. And so we have questions. Questions related to giving glory to God. Number one, what is the glory of God? Number two, why it is so urgent and so crucial to give glory to God? Number three, what happened to the religious world why such commands okay, to give glory to Him? Number four, what quality or characteristic of glory we can give to God? Because the Bible says, all fall into sin and come short in the glory of God. So, number five, how to glorify God? Does man have glory of his own or God share his glory? How short we are in the glory of God? So these are very important questions for us to understand and to learn. And we're going to discuss it today. Let's go first to Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Where Paul says, For all have sinned and come short with the glory of God. So I look at several texts. What do you mean by short? What is the meaning of the word short? This must be clarified to determine in what we believers can give glory to God. How can we give glory to God if we are all short of it? So there are many references of the word short in Greek. It's hystero on type from hystero. So in the New King James Version, it is translated into different English words. In the case of Matthew, 19.20 is lack. Mark 21, 10.21 is lack or lacking. Luke 15.14, in want. In 2 Corinthians 11.5 is inferior. In 2 Corinthians 12.11 is behind. And Philippians 4.12 is in need. So, with these references, from the context of the sticks, it means there is still glory but deficient and lacking or short. By implication, believer has the possibility to give glory to God, but always short. God must provide His grace for our utter deficiency or shortness of glory. Let me explain a minute. Because there are manifold quality character of God's glory. 
The glory of God is revealed in many quality characteristics, but the Bible uses only glory with some description. So for the sake of understanding it better, it is safe to put into a word or concept. So, you cannot find this in the Bible, but I make it because of concept, the way I read so that I could describe it, what the Bible says, and we will understand. First, there is so-called effulgent glory. It is indescribable lightness, the brightness, the splendor, the radiance, the luster. That the Bible portrays it as a consuming fire or an approachable light that a sinner ceases to exist with his glory. You find that in Deuteronomy 4.24, meaning to say, the effulgent glory is that no sinner can come to, God, come to God because he is a sinner and he will simply cease to exist. He will die because of that immense glory that is consuming fire or an approachable light. That is effulgent glory. The second is I describe it is an intrinsic glory. This glory is essential inherent nature and attributes of God, which is exclusive in nature and in character. God said in Isaiah 43, My glory I will not give to the others, to the gods. It belongs to him. He is really uh, a being full of glory, but this glory does not destroy like the effulgent glory. Then the third is the in intrinsic glory. This means the glory is manifested or displayed in the wonders of the creation of God. That's why you find this statement from Psalm 19.1. The heavens declares the glory of God. We find the mountains, the river, the beautiful things, the sky. We call this one extrinsic because it displayed the wonders of God's creation. And number four, I term it shared glory. It is a manifestation, reflection, reproduction of communicable attributes, character of God, so that he may be known by people. The characteristic of his in ideal kingdom is displayed. So we have this uh, four quality characteristics. It differs according to the context. So let's go to the truth. What is the truth? Okay, we keep on saying. Okay, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. But what does it mean? Let's look at first. God is the King and the Lord of glory. Oh. So Psalm 29, 1. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory. God glory thunders. The Lord is over in many waters. Ascribe to the Lord heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory in his strength. Ascribe the Lord to the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. So our God is the Lord of glory. He is the God of glory. Not only that. It's very exciting to know. Psalm 24, 7 says, Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lip up, your everlasting door, for the king of glory shall come. And who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lip up your heads, O get lip up, the everlasting door. The king of glory shall come. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You know, this was sung by the angels when Jesus arrived in heaven during his ascension. So this psalm really is a messianic. So what is being discussed here is that he is the king of glory. That's why we ought to say glory to God because he is the king. But what kind of glory is the glory that we need to give to the Lord? We'll discuss that further. And so in 2 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak of the wisdom of God in a mystery. 
the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of this ruler of this age knew. For they had known they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. So Jesus Christ is called by Paul the Lord of glory, the King of glory. So it is proper and fitting to give such attributes, such honor, because he is the King of glory. So why there is an imperative? An imperative, give glory to God. We, we must find the reasons why this is called. For example, Revelation 4, verse 11, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things by your will. They exist, and they were created. Why we need to give glory to God? Because He created everything. Because by His will, everything existed. This is the main reason you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. And as what we have started, Revelation 14, 6, saying in a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. Again, repeat it. Worship him who created the heaven and the earth and the sea and the spring of water. And we need to understand why God created us. Don't you know that why God created us? Not, not only because God loves us so much, as John 3.16 says. But listen to what Isaiah said. Isaiah 43.7. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Meaning to say, the purpose why we are created by God is that to give glory to him. We are created for his glory. That's why he is worthy. First Chronicles 16, 28. Give to the Lord of families of the people. Give glory to the Lord of glory. Verse 29. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Or worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So these are the imperatives. Why we need to give glory to God. He is our creator. He formed us. He called us by his name. And we are bound, duty bound, to give him glory. Let's go further in our study. Psalm 115 verse 1. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to the name give glory because your mercy, because of your truth. Here is another reason. His name. And we know God's name is his character. Psalm 72, verses 8, 18 to 20. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. We have looked at several texts. The reason there is an imperative why we give glory to God because he is our creator. Everything. Because Revelation 14 is a call to return to give glory to God because most people in the world today has not given glory to God but given glory to those what they have created. Just like King Nebuchadnezzar. Did I create this Babylon for my glory? And so we need to understand the reason and the imperatives why human must or should give glory and praise to God. He is God, the creator, the king of glory. Humans are created for his glory and in return give him glory. And the entire earth will be filled with his glory. He is the king of praise. So everything that has breath shall praise him and glorify him. Peter is saying that he said, In this you greatly rejoice, though a little while. If needed be, you had been graved by various trials. The genuineness of your faith, much more 
the precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What an amazing revelation. Our the genuineness of our faith, precious than gold, this may perish, but our faith is tested for the reason of praise, honor, and glory when Jesus comes. In fact, verse 8, the last part, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What a beautiful promise. So let us return again. Why we give praises and glory to God? Because He formed us so that we may declare His praise, His honor, His glory. Psalm 22, verse 3, But you are wholly enthroned in the praises of Israel. My brothers and sisters, we miss the point if we cannot understand for our creation. We are created by God so that we may praise Him and glorify Him. Deuteronomy 10, 21 says, Here is your praise, He is your God. But usually we praise ourselves, what we have created, rather than we praise our God. What's the reason of praising God? Who has done great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Psalm 71, 8, let your mouth be filled with praise with your glory all day. I was fascinated to look at in the Bible that praise, glory, and honor side by side. Because that's the reason why we are created. For example, look at that Psalm 150, the Psalm of Worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty permanent. Praise Him for His mighty act. Praise Him according to the excellence of His greatness. Let everything that has re- Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we are created. Not to praise ourselves. Praising ourselves has a place. But we cannot commend it to God. Because we are created to give praises and glory to God. If this purpose of God of creating us, we can fulfill that whatever we do, whatever we share with other people and how we live in a life, then His plan and purpose, He created us for His praise and for His glory, surety, the end of that is salvation. Why God declares such imperative? I give some reason. Our glory, God is our glory and did not glorify and change that glory with something else. According to Psalm 3, But you, Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, the one who lifts my hands. So God is our glory. How can what kind of glory? It's not, the, it's not the intrinsic. It is the extrinsic and the shared glory. Why? Because Romans says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor thankful, but become futile in their thoughts, and their foolish in their hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, like birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. That's the problem. That's why the book of Revelation in the first angel's message, return, give glory to God because people the entire world glorify their achievements, what they have done, what they have accomplished, and supposed to be this glory to be returned to God, who is the king of glory and who provides the glory, but human selfishness dominate that the glory of God has been changed into things that are corruptible, useless, temporary. This is the reason why there is a call, give glory to God. 
And so, the book of Revelation mentioned also, the dragon, the wounded beast, the lamp-like beast, the toll of praise, glory, and worship by deception. This is the reason. Look at Revelation 13, verse 2. The dragon gave him power to his throne and the great authority. And I saw one of his head is that being mortally wounded, and the deadly one was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast, and they worshiped the dragon who gave the authority to the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? It's changing. The agents of Satan, the triumvirate, the wounded beast, the lamp like beast, where they use a lot of miracles and wonder and they say, Who is like the best? This here is the problem of my brothers and sisters. Because the glory of God has been replaced, it's stolen by his enemy. And so, when the glory of God is removed, there is a big problem. So the demonic trinity deceived the whole world. The dragon, the beast, the false prophets. These are spirit of demons performing signs. Go out to the kings of the earth and the whole world and to gather them in the battle of Armageddon. Why? These are when you see miracles. But actually the miracles is deceiving. We see glory to God. Glory to God. Have you find this ministry a lot? That sometimes a crippled man comes to and once uh, lay the hands and then immediately walk and throw the scratches. But actually it's a fake. Just to give false glory. It's a glory to the preacher rather than to God. This is the big problem. So the dragon, the devil, and Satan deceives the whole world. Remember what, 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 what Satan was telling to Jesus in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, I give all this kingdom, the splendor, the glory of this kingdom. We need to understand that, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus, who is the king of glory, and this glory of his kingdom has been blinded by the enemy, and we look at the world and everything therein. Because the world has its own glory, but not like the glory of God. So, the three demonic trinities imitating, counterfeiting the divine trinity and the work of the three angels' messages, which deceives the whole world. And so, we need to see, look at again, look at the glory of God. It's the brilliances, brilliance, the brightness, the splendor, the glory, the preeminence. Look at when sin no more. Revelation 21, 2, I saw no temple in it. The Lord God Almighty, the Lamb, are its temple. The city, no need of the sun or moon to shine. For the glory of God illuminated it. Here, the redeemed, who practices praises and glory on planet Earth. When they have performed the task of God's business of giving glory in the heaven, it, does, it did not say that the sun, there is a sun, there is a moon, but the, the brightness of the sun and the moon has been covered by the glory of God. Look at in Exodus 24, 15. Moses went up to the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it in six days. And on the seventh day, he called Moses out of the mist. The sight of the glory of the Lord were like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of Israel. This is, I said, the effulgent glory. Where they cannot touch the mountain, they will die. They cover their faces because they cannot afford. Human physical eyes cannot behold the glory of God. So, let me repeat. Let me explain again. God's glory is exclusive. That's why we return to him the glory. Look at Isaiah 42. Verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. 
So, my own sake, for my own, I will not pursue my name to be profane. I will not give my glory to another. Exclusive. So, we need to return to God. You know, I've been, I've been hearing a lot of these people. When people achieve something uh, they have done, they say, Oh, glory to God. But actually, inside their hearts is saying, Lord, I give you the glory, but give me some because I did it. That's actually our hearts. That's what's really in our hearts. Actually, we don't, we want really to share because we have the one to perform it. But listen, John 1 14, when Jesus became a human, the word flesh, the word become flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld this glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Just imagine that when they saw Jesus, the fullness of the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hebrews 1.3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory. And so Jesus can claim, John 17, 5, Now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory that I had with you before the world was. When the redeemed shouted, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, power to our God. It's time now to return to God, the honor and the glory. Not to what we have done. Because later on you will understand what is our glory as a human being. Character of God is his glory. Moses pleaded with God in the mountain. Exodus 33, 18. He said, please show me your glory. Then God said, okay, my goodness, my graciousness, my compassion. Here is a shared glory. The glory of God, the attribute that he shared. Gracious goodness. Let's move to Exodus 34. Now the Lord proclaimed the name. What is the name? It's the character. Gracious, merciful, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands. Did you understand now? That the character of God is God's glory. We call this one the shared glory. That's why we can glorify God when we receive this characteristic. We can return the glory of God as has been declared in Revelation 14.6. Give glory to God. We can give. So, it is his character. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.3, the gospel of the glory of Christ. What's the gospel? The good news. About God's have done in us through Jesus Christ. The light of the knowledge, the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We can understand God the Father in the person of Jesus Christ. So you find that in Exodus 16. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. For he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? I like that. The Lord manifested his glory. He shared glory. So that when we mirror that glory, we reproduce such kinds of glory. So, this is what I call the intrinsic. The exclusive and the intrinsic. You give the law and the Lord and the glory which you give me, I have given them. It is exclusive because it belongs to Jesus. But now he said to his, to his father, Father, the glory you give me, I give them a sheer glory. That they may just be one and we are one. This is the beginning of the signs that Jesus did in Cana in Galilee, manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. The character shared. My question, did you receive this shared glory in your life? Or you just keep on saying the glory belongs to me, the glory belongs to me. 
That's why Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he has called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. He is a sheer glory. Once we are really enveloped by the shared glory of God, we manifest his character, his beautiful character, because we are called. And this, and this calling would bring us to justification, and in return, we can glorify God. So this is the shared glory. God gives glory as a gift, a shared glory for the purpose of his praise and glory not to be abused and misused. It is to bless others by reflecting the manifold dimension of his character that God may be known by people particularly in the kingdom. Look at Daniel 2, 37. The God of heaven has given you the kingdom, the power, strength, and the glory. This is King Nebuchadnezzar. It is God who gave, shared, but they were misused and abused. Because when God gives glory, it means so that people can understand the character of God. But once we abuse this glory that is shared, we lose sight of the glory of God and it becomes our own because we are selfish. Glory is shared God's character with his people. Look at that. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as the Spirit of the Lord. What is that? We are beholding the glory of the Lord as in the mirror. It will transform us. On the same image of glory. Let me use a very crude illustration. Husband and wife, different personality. When they get married, because every day, 30 years, 40 years, they go together, they understand, they were transformed. They understand by looking. So the glory of the Lord, the shared glory, and when we understand the loveliness of the character of God, the character of Jesus, everything that is positive, we can develop and we mirror, meaning to say, we reflect his character in us. So the book of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 2 verse 10, it was fitting for him for, all, for whom all things, by whom all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So shared, the shared glory, the one who helped us. Look at Peter says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God raised upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Have you seen that? Reproach in the name of Christ, telling us all oh, these kind of Christians, they are not. Really. But once we show our character, did you understand that during the dark ages, hundreds and thousands of people of Satan who witnessed the persecution, the dying in different forms, how Satan persecuted. When they persecuted, they look at the character. Why they are willing to die? Why they have not made any all those foul language and all those curses under the sun? Why is it? And such character, hundreds and thousands of Satan under his banner, turn into the banner of Jesus Christ and willing to die. And that's why Ellen White says in the second part, second chapter of Great Controversy, Satan stopped persecuting because he lost a lot of his people because the persecuted displayed the character of God. Romans 4.20 Abraham did not wither the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Wow. When did Abraham give glory to God? 
We find it when God said, offer your only son. Did you understand? He is the only son at the age of 90, 100. That's the time he had a son. He has to ask several questions. Is this the voice of the Lord? But no, he is really sure. His character of giving. Because he understands, in my old age, my body is dead. But God has given me. Now I'm going to return. This is what Paul is saying. Giving glory to God. Because being fully convinced of what he had promised, he also able to perform and therefore it was counted for him as righteousness. That's the imperative. Giving glory to God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whether, therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do in the glory of God. This is very important for me. Let me read again, 1 Corinthians 6.20 You are bought in a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. This is very important. There are eating, even you are a Christian, you believe in Jesus, but this kind of eating, drinking, living, and working does not glorify God. This is serious. Because he says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, give to the glory of God. How can we reflect that when we eat, God's name and character is manifested the way we eat, what we are eating. And what for, why we eat such food. Why we have such drink. It's very enlightening. Not only in our praise, in the way how we do, but in our personal life. Give glory to God in your body and your spirit. Because you are bought with a price. This is so important. Did you remember where did we fall? Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve fall because God said, do not eat that. A simple, clear command. We fall short of God's glory because of eating. It means to say, in the end time, many come short of God's glory because the eating, the drinking, and all other things, God's character is not seen. It's not manifested. We need to glorify our body. God in our body. Because our body is the temple of the Lord. Our body, we need to glorify God in our body, in our spirit. Because it is His not ours, borrowed. And look again to Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works that glorify your Father in heaven. You see, imagine? When we perform good works, compassion, graciousness, goodness, truth, helpful, obedience, and all of these things, that Jesus have executed while he was on earth, mirroring us, we have performed it, then people will glorify God. The Father in heaven is glorified. Why? Because it's yours. Have you remembered that long story where a young girl was bringing his stuff and then somebody bumped it and then it scattered on the ground and when it was scattered, somebody helped him and uh, helped the girl and then return and put it there and then touch and very compassion. We're so sorry about what happened, but we return and then the girl says, are you Jesus? There are so many of us in the church we have been spending in church 20, 30 years. There are so many in need of help. But our Christianity is for ritual rather than relationship. 
We have not. We failed. It is sad to my heart. It's sad to our all hearts that we have not manifested really the glory, the character of God. And so, there is a return. So the biblical writer perceived inclusive or shared glory will be completed in the future kingdom, in the throne of glory. So the future glory, according to Paul, I consider this suffering in this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be re revealed in us in the future. Peter says, 1 Peter 5.10, But many, may the God of all grace, who called us into eternal glory of Jesus Christ, after you suffered while perfect, established, string and settled, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Meaning to say, there is a characteristic of being suffering. We suffered because of Christ's name. We suffered because we do something. We do the sacrificial things because that's the character of Jesus Christ who live his splendor and kingdom in heaven and come just like, and then it helped as an illustration what is God's character. The richness of God's glory. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply all your need according to the riches in the glory by Jesus Christ. He is so rich because he is the king of glory. Now to our Father, God the Father, be the glory forever. Amen. Colossians 1.27 To them will to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery that to the Gentiles which is in Christ. The hope of glory. There is only one hope. That is Christ. He is so rich. If you suffer, brethren, sometimes somebody will ask us, Brother, can you help me? I don't have money. I don't have rice. I don't have clothes. Paul says, our light affliction, which is but a moment, is working for us more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. For while we do not look things that are seen, but things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but things which are not seen are eternal. Affliction, suffering, sacrifices. These are part of the character of the shared glory. We have to do it. Let us give glory to God. When somebody, when you give, give. Expect nothing in return. Do not make calculated goodness. That's the problem of many of our churches today. Why? Let's do mission so that when we do evangelism, they will understand wrong. You give mission because people need it, and that is the character of Jesus, to do mission. It is God. The problem is we have a thinking like a man courting a lady. That we need to have this one, all give, all, all give, because later on, Oh, I have already deposited something wrong. That is not God's glory. That is your own glory. Look at that even our baptism. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. Just as Christ raised from the dead to the glory of the Father. So even so, you should walk in the newness of life. Philippians 3.21, who will transform our lowly body that conform to his glorious body. It is raised in glory. So, since we are baptized, let us give the glory to God. And I like this illustration. Because the word, do not be conformed. As we look at that, when we look at in the mirror, we are transformed. Here is a butterfly. Look. Caterpillar. Then in a cocoon. And the time went by. It's a beautiful butterfly. That's what we call 
transformation, change into glory, into the glory. Look at the cycle. We are worm. We are itsy worm. But when we are covered by God's glory, and then we share that glory, once we go out from the cocoon of sin, and Jesus shared glory will be in us, we like a beautiful butterfly. We call that in Greek, metamorphosis. What a beautiful transformation. Let us not wait. The external glory, the consuming fire that will destroy us. Snap. The consuming fire of God's glory is reserved to those who fail to give glory to Him in the end. They will be destroyed. He is an approachable fire. He is a consuming fire. That glory that is external, the effulgent, is reserved for those who did not fulfill the imperative, give glory to God. Since you are not giving give glory, God will give you his glory, the effulgent glory that will consume you and you ceases to exist. Remember that. It's repeating. Give glory to him. Because that glory he shared in us. When, we, when he shared that glory to us. We escape. The fulgent glory. Which is the consuming fire. Just like what happened in Exodus. In Mount Sinai. The whole mountain was in, 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 in fire. Splendor. That's why they cannot approach God. Good that God did not manifest that to us today. So we have our own glory. I discuss so much on the glory of God, but they are short when we study more. But what I like is this. 1 Corinthians eleven seven. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of a man. Ah, here we see God's glory and man's glory. Okay? Instead of giving God's glory, man's glory turned to the woman. And possibly vice versa, due to fallen nature. Man's glory always horizontal in direction. Earthly. It's never vertical. Our mouth says vertical. Glory to God. But actually, our action is horizontal. What is our glory? This is very interesting. First Peter 1 to all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as flower as grass, as grass withers and its flower fall away. How, how temporal is man's glory? All the glory of man is like a grass. When it is raining, it is green. But when it is summer, scorching and it's burned. Cannot stand. We need to understand our glory. That's why we cannot use this glory to God. James 1.9, for the lowly bro brother glory in his exaltation, but the rates in his humiliation. Get now the position. If we are poor and lowly and humble, if we have the truth, our glory is exaltation. But the rich should be humiliated. But it's the opposite. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen in a burning heat with it withers the grass. It, the flower falls, the beautiful appearance perishes, so the rich man will fade away its pursuit. That's what happened when we brag our glory. That is nonsense. It's not lasting. Have you read all those people who are so rich, so arrogant? What happened? There is always provision. Anything we do is like a grass. It withers. 
But when we cultivate the sheer glory of God, we stay. So, Psalms 49, 16, do not be afraid when one becomes rich. When the glory of his house increase, when he dies, shall he carry nothing away. His glory shall not be seen with him. Oh. It's not, I told you, only horizontal. Hosea 4, 7 says, the more they increase, the more they sin against me. And I will change their glory into shame. So man has a glory. David says, my glory. The said the Lord, let, the my, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Ah, we have. Let the mighty man glory in his might. The rich man glory in his riches. But let him glory this. He understands and knows that me, I am the Lord exercising Loving kindness, judgment, righteousness on earth. For in this I delight, says the Lord. We see the exactly opposite. The purpose of the shared glory is that. So that the people will know the display of God's character reflected in people. Paul says, even for the same purpose. I raise you up that I might show the power that my name will be declared to all the earth. This is, was talking about Pharaoh. In fact, all kings in the kingdoms, Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Media Persia, Rome. What's that? God gave them glory, a shared glory, so that people could understand that this kingdom is so great because God is making them great, but yet, God's shared glory was misused, abused to oppress people, to destroy people, and make their own. What happened? They lost. Matthew 6.29 Yet I say to you, Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like the lilies and this beautiful grass and flowers. You know, Solomon was the king, the golden Riches everything to the pinnacle. But Jesus says, look what happened to his glory. His glory, not mine. Because Solomon, at the beginning, he did the glory of God. But for how many years he changed the incorruptible glory of God into the glory according to his own understanding. Daniel 4.36, Nebuchadnezzar says, At the time, my reason to me and the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor return. Did you understand? Seven years he ate together with the animals in the ranch. But when he understood that there is a God of heaven who shared his glory, and then King Nebuchadnezzar said, the glory of my kingdom was restored. He believed in God. He removed all the idols in the land of Babylon and he worshipped the only true God. What a beauty, what a message. But he snip you. If you try 5, Daniel 5, 18. O king, the most high give Nebuchadnezzar, your father a kingdom, majesty, glory and honor. But you have misused and abused. What a message, my brother and sister. Let me now put that in application. Ellen White says, The glory of God is his character. Christ desires his followers to reveal their lives the same character of Christ. Amazing Grace, page 322. The greatest work can be done in our world is to glorify God by living the character of Christ. Reflecting Christ 3.13. God called his people to glory and virtue. They were to manifest in their life all who truly converted with him. Glory of God to give virtue to his children. Because we are the praise for his glory. Let's go back there. I discussed that at the beginning. We are created for his praise and glory. Again, look this thing in Ephesians. 
to the praise of his glory. That's our ultimate work so that we can finish the work of Jesus. Reflection, reproduction of God's glory. By beholding Christ, by talking of him, by beholding the loveliness of his character, we become changed, changed from glory to glory. What is glory? The character. He becomes changed from character to character. Thus we see that there is a work of purification that goes on by beholding Jesus. The sons and daughters, 337. When the character of Christ is reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim his own. Christ's object lesson, 69. So how can we give glory to God? To illustrate in the Old Testament, God is described as the Son. But he is the Son of Righteousness, portrayed in the two texts in Psalm and in Malachi. Psalm 8411, for the Lord God is a Son. The Lord will give grace and glory. Malachi 4, to the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing wings. Jesus explained the text when he claims, He is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Then who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but in light. Did you understand that? We get our light from Jesus and we walk in the light. We follow. When we get the shared glory and used to walk on that glory, we can glorify God. When his character is reflected in us, listen to what Ellen White says. Christ is seeking to reproduce himself in the hearts of men. He does this to those who believe in him. The object of life is fruit bearing. The reproduction of Christ's character. The believer that it may produce to others. And then, where all who profess his name bearing fruit his glory, how quickly the world will be sown the seed of the gospel. Quickly the last harvest would ripen and Christ would come to gather the precious grain. So we understand, when we reflect God's glory, God's character, it's easy to finish the whole world because... Our character is go incongruent in harmony with the gospel that we preach. Jesus is the light of the world. His followers reflect that. Jesus is the light of the world. Now his followers partake the light from him. In return becomes the light to reflect the light to the world. You are the light of the world. He's the light. But now he shared that light. And let your light so shine before men. And they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It is the character and quality of that work that glorify God. Having a noble conduct, honorable among Gentiles. When they speak against you as evildoers, but they may by your own good works, they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. How can we have the glory? Abide in me. By my Father is glorified when you bear much fruits. What's fruit in Jesus' mind? Paul has the answer. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there's no such law. This is a reflection of God's character in Exodus 34, 6. Long-suffering, goodness, and truth. How much fruit we bear? The fruit is really love, joy, peace, long suffering. Goodness, faith, meekness, Galatians 5, 22, 23. These fruits can never perish but will produce after its kind of harvest unto eternal life. The graces of the Spirit will ripen the character. Your faith increase, your conviction deepen, your love made perfect more and more. You reflect the likeness of Christ in all that is pure, noble, and lovely. And so, how can we glorify God? There is a time in Revelation. We call it the loud cry where God's people manifested his character and the whole world illuminated with his glory. How can? Remember, let's go to practical things. He says, Isaiah 58, 6. Is not the fast that I have chosen? Fasting. What is the kind of fasting? 
that to lose the bands of wickedness and though he be burdens, let the oppressed people go free and let break every yoke is not the share of your bread to the hungry. Ah, this is God's glory that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. And there is a healing spring speedily and the righteousness of the Lord will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be on your rear guard. Did you remember that? Matthew 25. The Lord says, When did we see you hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, prison? This is our job. God is glorified in the Christian body. When our body, we entrusted the most solemn message that we need to take good care of our physical, mental, spiritual helpfulness because God will not accept tainted disease, corruptive sacrifice. Care must exercise in eating, in drinking, in dressing, in working. Let's distract our efficiency and fail of doing our most exalted work the best manner in order the result of our labor may be lasting as eternity. So, we need to drink it for the glory of God. Here is how. Moses spent years with God. And look at his character. The disciples spent three and a half years with Jesus. But the last 40 days was so intense. And there was a change. And listen to what? He said, what we heard from Jesus, what we saw, what we behold, what we witness, we share it to you just like as the Father manifested to us. I like that. Ellen White say, when the fruit is brought forth immediately, put it a cycle because the harvest is come. Christ is waiting with longing desire the manifestation himself in the church. When the character of Christ shall perfectly reproduce in his people, then he will come. So it's a life and death question. Because sometimes we take. Let's look at what Jesus says. Everything Jesus on earth reveal who is God and his character. Spend time with Jesus. Moses spent time with Jesus according to 2 Corinthians 3.15. That is the context. Beholding as a mirror, glory of the Lord, being transformed, metamorphosis, to glory, to glory. How many hours in a day or a week you spent with God's word? Jesus or God. This is the secret of having the glory of God. The disciples spent three and a half years training and spent solid years and days. Listen what people say. And when they know the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived they were uneducated and trained and they marveled because they realized they had been with Jesus. The result, they turned the world outside, upside down. So if Jesus spent time with his father in public, he prayed alone. He, he was alone. He, he prayed with the father before meals, before important decision, before healing, after healing to do the father's will. He spent time with God and so he reflect the glory of God. Christ is the fullness of God's glory. My brothers and sisters, I want to end this presentation. Now that you know what is God's glory, spend time with Jesus. Spend time with his word. When you spend time, you will be transformed. Just like Moses, just like the disciples or apostles, when they spend time with Jesus, their message and their character go together and reflect and they were conquered. May the Lord bless you as we ask the Lord that the shared glory will be manifested in us. We show the character of Jesus and in the end, we fulfill God's purpose for creating us for his praise and his glory. This is my prayer. Thank you.